Yeah, I've actually heard that strategy even just with Kindle books. Just like, right. I guess the description, you can mention that you know you have a, a free video bonus or just some sort of bonus that maybe in the book or you know after they buy the product they can get access to. So I think that's a really good strategy. Um, yeah, exactly. Like a lot of people have done that with info products, but it's just not done as much with physical products, and that's yeah. where there's massive opportunities. Yeah. That kind of leads into let's say um, let's say you have a product that's ranked, whether it's iPhone cases or whatever it might be. What are what are the, some of the things? What are what are some of the other things that can differentiate you? Like obviously, probably like the uh, the title of the product or the headline yep. is important. That the image that you have there is important as well. Uh, the description is important. Any any tips or advice just on optimizing that fully? Yeah, I mean the main the main things when it comes to optimizing a listing to make it convert that are really you know title. First off, like. Right now, honestly, on Amazon, almost borderline keyword stuffing on your title is going to help you get more traffic because right. they are where at from a keyword perspective. They're at like where Google was like six years ago. But you still want to make sure that it's readable and that it's built for users. So you can include things like that it has a guarantee or include like, you know, zero risk or any of that kind of good marketing stuff. But then you also just find ways to logically and you know, somewhat grammatically correct work in different keywords that are relevant to the product. So that's one thing is the title. The second thing is the images. You have nine image spots for most products. So including images there that really sell the product. With your first image, if you're going by Amazon's policies, which not everyone does, it's supposed to be a picture just of the product with a white background. Okay, cool. Even if you don't want to kind of step on a gray area and do something different, all the other eight images can be nicely designed, like, uh, you know, gra uh, graphical representations of the product that have different bullet points about the product, different angles, different benefits, et cetera, et cetera. And then the other thing that you can sort of uh, really work to your advantage is the description. A lot of descriptions for physical products on Amazon especially are, are really poor. They're just like one or two sentences, just something bland, it's no fun whatsoever. But if you really write that like two or 3,000 characters, like you're writing sales copy, like you live or die by that, that thing's ability to sell people on that product, that can also help increase your conversion rate. Then there's obviously reviews. And reviews are extremely important, just, just like for books, like they are for physical products. I mean, the more and the better reviews that you have, uh, you know, that, that can go a long way and almost be more important than any of those other things. Right, that's, that's, that's awesome. Um, maybe going back to the ranking, uh, how, how exactly does Amazon ranking work? How do they rank, how do they determine, for example, the, you know, if there's a certain product uh, keyword, there's like 20 pages, how does the ranking structure work and what can people sure. do to start to rank their product, their book, and Amazon? Sure. So for so for categories, it's pretty straightforward. It's just pretty much based off the number of sales, number of units sold. That's really all it is. It's updated every hour or so, something like that. Um, but for keywords, it's a little different and it's not updated as fast. It seems to be updated every few days or so. Uh, but for keywords, I mean, it's really about, honestly, it's really about Two things. First off, your pro your product converting better than any other product. You know, like the things we just talked about, having better image, title, uh, better social proof, being reviews, description, all that sort of stuff that makes it convert better. So that's kind of like the fundamentals you want to get in place first. Second thing is is making your product get sales through whatever keyword you're targeting. Right. So rather than having like a marketing campaign where you tell people. Hey, you know, here's a link to my product, go buy it, please. Okay, cool, that's going to bump up your ranking on Amazon, your category ranking, but it's not going to affect your keyword ranking. And if it does, it'll be marginal. But instead, you can say, hey, you know, I'm, uh, here's a coupon to go buy my product, go search for this keyword, you'll see me at the bottom of page one, then buy my product. Right. You're going to get very minimal drop-off, but you'll get the benefit of people searching for that keyword, buying your product, and that's what's going to help you really rank better for that keyword. Right. But you want to make sure that, like, that's kind of a temporary fix because that's going to boost you up in keyword rankings. But that's why you want to make sure your product has the fundamental components that make it convert better. Because then just naturally, when somebody's searching on Amazon for that keyword never heard of you before, they're going to click on your product, they're going to buy your product instead of somebody else's. That's why you want those fundamental things in place that makes your product convert better first before you do a marketing campaign like that. Right. And it, is that able to work just with, for example, if you did the search for the product and you know when you, for example, in the link, um, you can have the keyword in the link? Is that the next question? That's the next question or? everyone always asks. Yeah, yeah, it does not seem to work. Oh, interesting. We've, I mean, honestly, like we've tried direct link into the, the search, I mean, the product that has the keyword parameter in there. We've tried building a little tool that basically automatically updates the timestamp um, so that it's not exactly the same link, but it automatically updates. It just, for whatever reason, does not seem to work as well. 
Right. So it. I mean, that would be ideal, but yeah. Yeah. So they have to actually the person has to type it in, and it just looks organic and natural, and then. However, the person, I guess, found your product and bought it for that keyword, it's just basically telling Amazon, their search engine, that, yeah. you know, it's associating that keyword with your product, so the ranking goes up, right? So Yeah, exactly. As far as, as, far as we can tell, that's really the, the, the way it works the best. And have you found that, you know, reviews and, and things like that, do they make a difference to ranking at all, or do they kind of... Yeah, I, I think they make a difference to ranking because of the sort of secondary benefit of boosting conversion rate. Mm -hmm. So, like... For example, like you have a list of 10 products or so whenever somebody searches. If you have your product that has 1,000 reviews, everyone else has 10 reviews, then your product's naturally going to get more clicks. Your product's naturally going to convert higher because people believe in it more. And that additional conversions from, on average, when people set the rankings for that keyword, I don't necessarily believe there's a direct benefit. Like if you get a bunch of reviews, then you're automatically going to rank for all these keywords. Um, it, it, I believe it's that, that sort of secondary benefit. Right. Okay. Um, so let's say someone has launched a product, whether it's a book or a physical product. How yeah. can they start to get reviews um, for their product? I honestly think the best way is like, you know, it's a way a lot of people don't want to do because it, it costs a little bit of money, but it's really just to give the product away. I mean, you want to do it in a structured way so that you have somebody who's following up with those people and to making sure they write a review and all that sort of good stuff. But that's why, like, Honestly, like when I first started selling physical products and whatnot, like I didn't care as much about quality. Like I would never sell anything that was like harmful or dangerous or that sort of stuff. But I didn't care about having the best product in the market. I was like, whatever, you know, I'm just trying to learn this, just trying to run a business. But now, like you see, like your most powerful thing is being able to give people the product, follow up with them, ask them to write a review, and they actually want to do it. So like it makes sense. You don't have to have some custom created world's best product ever made, but something that really delivers on its promise and really provides value, the value people are expecting, or ideally a little bit more, um, because your best best way to launch any product is just to give however many away you want to get in reviews and use that. I mean, people do that in the book model all the time. I mean, we all know the example of like Tim Ferriss giving away 2,000 copies um, before he launched the product and like, or launched the book, and on the day of launch, he just basically asks people to write reviews. Right. First couple hours, he's got hundreds of reviews. I mean, that works just the same for, for any physical product. Right. And so on Amazon, would you just send it as a gift or how exactly would you do that? Yeah, that's the thing is like ideally somebody buys it from Amazon, like you can create promotion codes that basically make it zero cost for people, but you know, it doesn't really matter. I mean, Amazon gets all kinds of reviews that are completely legitimate, not fake whatsoever, but that are from people that maybe bought the product at Walmart or bought it at Target or whatever, and you're just going to Amazon to write a review. Right. It's fine. It's, you know, not ideal, but it doesn't, because obviously, if you're making people jump through another hoop, having to go order it from Amazon first, yep. then that's going to decrease your response rate. I would just give them the product. Like, hey, give me your address. Your product's on its way. Right. Okay. But if you gift it to them, it, it doesn't matter whether it shows up as a verified review or just a regular review. It's still... Yeah. Like, you obviously, like, know Amazon have done stuff. We've had this debate, you know, with me and business partners and whatnot. It's like, you know Amazon, so you know what a verified review is. I don't think most people have any freaking right. clue. Um, it makes no difference to them. Maybe one out of every, you know, twenty or something like that. I think most people have no clue. They just see reviews, and they, you know, some people probably judge like whether it seems overly fake or whatever. Uh, but other than that, I don't think it's a big difference. Right. Okay. Cool. Um, awesome, man. Well, this has been great. Um, is there any final things that you want to maybe mention or talk about uh, pe for people that are getting started or? Any maybe advanced tactics or whatever that people that maybe already have a product that's selling can do just to take it to another level? Yeah, I mean, I know you mentioned our, our course, Amazing Selling Machine. Obviously, there's, there's a lot of stuff there, but, you know, what, what I tell people that anybody that's getting started is, like, you know, don't sit there and just, you know, think about it for, you know, six years on what product you're going to sell and then eventually finally get into something. Like, Amazon tells you what products sell the best. Go in there, pick something that looks cool, that's selling well, ideally has a bestseller rank, you know, 100 or below, pick a product there, just start running with it, and you'll learn a heck of a lot more once you have a product live. I mean, inside the Amazing Selling Machine course, I mean, that, that's really what we drive home. It's for people not just to absorb information, but to actually go out there and do something. Yeah. So, I mean, honestly, anybody that's listening to this call, I mean, you should already be going to jumping over to Amazon and looking at the different products, seeing something you might be interested in, because, like, you can get started with a lot of these products with only, like, a few hundred bucks. Yeah. Now, you may find a product that there's a higher minimum order quantity and like that may be cost prohibitive for you, but for most products, it's not. And it's just, you know, if nothing else, great experience to have, but honestly, there's, there's a lot of money to be made there and there's a lot of 
a big businesses to be built, I mean, out of physical products. Because a lot of physical products are not like fly by night kind of like marketing loopholes and their products people could be ordering for years. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the biggest thing I say is just get started. Yeah. Let me ask you one more question and I want to maybe ask you a little bit more about your amazing uh, selling machine as well. Sure. Uh, what about the back end? What kind of um, ways have you found just to leverage the back end once people buy your product to maybe um, build a customer list or what kind of strategies right. do you have there? Right, so that's that's one limitation of that you'll encounter with selling on Amazon if you don't do it the right way. Is that when you sell physical products on Amazon, they're going to give you name, shipping address, phone number, and an encrypted email address. Easiest and cheapest way to market to people is via email. But you get an encrypted email address, so you can't really market to them because it all goes through Amazon systems. You can get your seller central account in trouble. What I recommend doing, which is what a lot of big companies do, take like a P90X for example is making sure you include some sort of offer or insert or something like that in your packaging that makes people want to go give you their email address. Whether that's an additional bonus offer, it's a user guide, it's a, uh, uh, you know, some different, you know, it's a fitness product, some different workouts they can do or whatever, it can apply to any product out there. You go do that because then hopefully if it's a strong enough offer and you've really written it up well and you, you've done all the marketing side right, hopefully you capture, you know, 50, 60% of those people uh, in an email database, then like it's real easy from that point on because every time you want to launch an Amazon product, hey, you know, we're giving some of these away for free or at a discount or whatever, um, go out there and buy it now and here's your coupon code. It's none of this sort of like, you know, having to build a list or uh, go through traffic sources or any of that sort of stuff. So I recommend doing that sooner rather than later and honestly building that into your packaging from the beginning because we've got, we've, we've, I've had experience multiple times where I like understand that um, intellectually, but then like, when you're neck deep and like running out of product and having to reorder and all that sort of stuff, you don't want to have to like worry about having to order this extra packaging to be able to include that sort of thing. So doing it from the beginning is really going to serve you incredibly well long term. And do you generally stay within the same niche? So if you're selling soap, you you basically expand your product line to other skincare products or you know health products or whatever. Right. Um, sort of in the past. I mean, there's, I mean, there's obviously advantage to doing that because then you can, you leverage that customer list to launch these new products. I mean, even if you only had a physical mailing address list, you can always send out postcards or whatever to launch your new product, but then it just depends. Um, I, I, you know, it doesn't decision, but sometimes you're just interested in other markets. You see another product selling well and you see it doing well. My real main criteria is can it be a big dollar brand because if then it's not it's not really worth it for me to go spend all the time and effort and do everything to jump in a product that only makes like five ten grand a month but if the product has the potential I mean it's nice if it starts there but it's only if it has the potential to make millions and millions of dollars then that makes it a good product to get into I don't really necessarily care what category it's in as long as it you know sort of meets my own I guess moral values